Hey ladies, this is Mocha Mommy here bringing you another video. And um, this one here, this is not a burn the cape kind of conversation. This is a get a warm blanket and you might just need to cry it out. Right now in the mainstream media, we're dealing with the drug overdose of DMX as well as the implications of substance abuse in the George Floyd trial. And so what I need for us to do is to get real about our relationship to substance abuse. DMX was a husband. Both he and Floyd were fathers. These guys were brothers and they were sons. And in the war on drugs, a lot of times we are the casualties. This is nothing that we enlisted for, but everything we suffer from, and we really need to get real about it. We have to understand that the drug trade is one of the main reasons why black men kill each other. It's one of the main reasons for incarceration, and it definitely impacts their employment opportunities. So we really need to be real about how this impacts us as well. Now I have a very vivid memory, childhood memory. Um, it was when I had went to Tower Records with my dad. And um, I don't even remember the album that I went there to buy, but I remember this situation. It, we were walking in the record store and it was 1992. Because when we walked into Tower Records, there was all of this promotion for Dr. Dre's The Chronic album. And I remember my dad getting so mad. I remember him being angry. And I remember him saying that this is the end. That right now what I was witnessing by seeing that album being promoted and that big marijuana leaf in vivid living color in my Tower Records that I was watching the end. That this was going to be the end. And, you know, to an extent, I, I think my dad perhaps was right. You know, my dad was an electrician. So my grandpa was one of the guys who had fight, fought to integrate the, the union, the Inter International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. My dad was the guy who had to work twice as hard to prove that he was worthy. But then that next generation that he had to try to big bring up behind him, it was hard to even find one who would even piss clean. Because my dad used to call it Rifa, Rifa. It was this Rifa that was keeping these boys out of getting these good union jobs. That a dime bag <laughs> was keeping you out of something that was gonna make you earn you 30, 40, 50 dollars an hour. I remember that. And if you talk to my dad, look, talk to these black men who were in their 60s, 70s, my dad's age, and you ask him about 1965, what was the biggest problem for the black family in 1965? He's not going to say it was welfare. He's going to say it was heroin. And if you really talk to my dad, I remember back when the out of wedlock childhood rate was over 50%. And you know, I remember we had a neighbor who was complaining about how his woman had kicked him out the house. And I remember my dad saying, your woman didn't kick you out. If your woman kicked you out the house, that crack cocaine and Colt 45 packed your bags for you. And my dad got into a fight. That guy and my dad got into a fight. I had never seen my, but he fought that day. And I clearly remember that. Not too long after that, about 1995, it, we had the Million Man March. My dad drove down for that. My dad, this devout Christian, was going to stand on the mall, drive six hours to Washington, D.C., stand on the National Mall, shoulder to shoulder with hundreds and thousands of black men. 
underneath the speaker under the guise of somebody from the NOI. This devout Christian man was going to stand there because he could not take what was happening in his neighborhood, in his community, among his people. And then not long after that, we moved. Now, see, y'all, this ain't no burn the cape conversation. This is a warm blanket conversation, y'all. So I need y'all to stick with me. Now, if you really want to see the impact that substance abuse has had on the black man, I want you guys to listen to Chris Rock's interview with Naomi Campbell. And Naomi Campbell has a YouTube um, channel and she has a talk show uh, called Unfiltered with Naomi. So for those of you who are cleaning out your algorithm, definitely subscribe and check out Naomi Campbell's talk show. But she was talking to Chris Rock and Chris Rock was kind of talking about what it was like um, in the 80s growing up in Bed-Stuy. And now that he's in his 50s, how many friends he's lost to substance abuse. Now, I am sure that Chris Farley is included in that number, but you guys, so many of you have brothers, uncles, fathers who were caught up in this too. You guys are casualties of this war on drugs too. And even though they'll never own up to it, this is the main reason why they're in jail. This is the main reason why there's so much homicide among black men. This is the main reason why so many of them are locked out of the job market. It's because their relationship to substance abuse, if it's legal or not. Okay, um, and they don't really discuss or open up about its impact. And this is where we have to be different. We have to be open about what it is we actually have experienced. Ladies, we have to talk about this because they can't talk about it, but we have to talk about this. Ladies, we have to talk about this. We have to talk about why is it that we talk more about Nipsey Hussle's homicide and not Juice World's overdose? or Pimp C's overdose. We really need to talk about how there really is not a support system. Even after the Million Man March, nobody came back home and built any rehab centers or support groups. We have to talk about how Future had to keep his semi-sobriety, the fact that he uh, had to stop drinking lean during, on his tour schedule, even though he made whole songs and albums about it. Um, because he couldn't keep up with the tour dates. There's not a lot of support for them to talk about this issue. And so therefore we have to talk about it. We have to talk about the broken relationships. We have to talk about how maybe our families had to pack us up and move us away to keep us sheltered from these things. We have to talk about those uncles who hadn't been at the Thanksgiving table, or maybe they were and ruin that family outing. We have to talk about, you know, I have a girlfriend right now who is dealing with a death in her family related to substance abuse and how she is choosing to handle it. And I had told her like, you know, some funerals, you gotta take off the time and you gotta fly out and you gotta go to, and some funerals, you just might have to cash out the family and send a flower arrangement and protect your peace. These are the conversations we need to really be having. We have to talk about the cousins that we have buried or the uncles that we were estranged from or the brothers that we saw incarcerated. We have to talk about the DMXs and the George Floyds and the Juice Worlds and the Futures and our own family. It's not just enough to say you're divested. We have to talk about how some of us have been seen as family ATMs because we were supporting a person who was supporting somebody's habit. I remember having a soldier who, even though she lived in the barracks and she was able to eat at the DFAC, the dining facility, 
was n always broke. And she had to come up to the fact that she had a brother with a substance abuse problem. And that no matter how many mortgages her mom had taken out on the house or title loans that she got on the car, he was not getting clean. And then therefore now she has to support her mother. We had to come up with a situation with a boundary. And that boundary was that she would give her mother $250 a month like clockwork, $250, $250 a month like clockwork, $100 every pay period. And then that $50 was going to be put into a savings account. And so that way, when she sent in the money like clockwork and she called her daughter with that emergency saying he's got to get bailed out of jail or we need to pay a lawyer or the bail bonds is money due, that $50 every month that she was saving, she can say, mom, this is what I got. This is all I have for you. And then she can have the peace of mind knowing that, hey, because my mom gets $100 every two weeks, at least I know she can get something to eat and put gas in her car and everything else is her choice. And when I give, put that $50 a month away into that savings account, if there's an emergency, I know that I can at least contribute something. So we got to come up with boundaries. We've got to come up with discussion points. And we have really got to heal from this. Listen, and marrying out, if you haven't dealt with this, it's not going to end the situation. I remember coming home from work one day after uh, drilling with my unit, and there was a smell in the air that I did not recognize. There was some ashes in a saucer that I didn't recognize. And my husband is sitting on the patio with some of his boys, and when he came back into the house to greet me, I flipped out. I flipped out. I'm like, what is this? What is this? And then he had to let me know what a macanudo was. A macanudo is a cigar from the Dominican Republic. And apparently, you know, it's not uncommon to get with your boys and smoke cigars and drink rum on a payday Friday <laughs> on, the, on the back patio. And that's when I realized that I had dish issues that I had to deal with. So ladies, um, let's just not chalk this DMX thing up to just some more celebrity gossip. Let's really address what's going on in our lives, what's going on in our past, what's going on in our families, because it seems like our counterparts really don't. So it's really um, essential that we discuss our enabling behavior, that we discuss boundaries, that we discuss how we can best deal with. I'm going to leave um, contact information for Al-Anon and for the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services um, hotline so that if you do need resources to talk about how substance abuse and addiction has impacted your family, I want you to do that. Listen, I know that some people, I show up in an algorithm as a quote unquote divestment channel, but what I want you to do is invest in your personal healing because just because a substance is legal does not mean that it's dan not dangerous. Okay. Um, DUIs. Many people have lost careers and livelihoods over DUIs. And um, a lot of domestic violence um, has happened as a result of alcoholism and substance abuse. So we really got to get resources to support our healing. Okay. This is not about burning capes, but wrapping ourselves in that warm blanket and getting the help that we need. This is Mocha Mommy, and I'll see you in the next video.